received generous benefits or memberships and were given substantial salary increases. The former executive director, directors, and the manager of administration experienced substantial increases in their annual salaries over an eight-year period. And that is reflected in this chart farthest to my left. Along with the former executive director's salary, which is the top line in orange, uh, which was a 108% increase over the period from 2000 to 2008, this group of employees enjoyed large increases in their salaries ranging from 42 to 92%. And just for comparison purposes, the CPI during that same period of time rose about 29% cost of living. Auditors found that a number of expenses were labeled marketing or special events. However, the airport had no documented or approved marketing plan to confirm that these expenditures were necessary or legitimate. The airport administration's travel and training budget is compared to its actual expenditures in this chart with the yellow and blue bars. And you'll see that though the budget continued to increase each year, the blue bar, uh, the staff exceeded budgeted amounts for all three years significantly. The audit makes strong recommendations to the board to improve oversight of credit card purchases, to review all airport salaries, benefits, and related policies, and to establish guidelines and criteria for these areas. We also recommend increased reporting to the board, uh, both through creating a function for an internal auditor, as well as rotating auditors, outside auditors, and having uh, an additional review of internal controls by those auditors. The airport board had established certain policies to govern the, govern the financial activity of its employees. In many instances, these policies were circumvented, and in other cases, the policies were simply inadequate. The board had not established an adequate reporting process for it to receive sufficient information to be fully aware of these issues and to provide proper oversight of management's financial activities. My office was officially asked by the Lexington Fayette Urban County Council in December to perform this special audit. With the release of this report today, we are confirming and quantifying earlier reports of excessive spending by the airport's former executive director and his management team that did not properly serve the mission of this airport. And with our recommendations, we are giving the airport board the necessary tools to strengthen its oversight going forward and to restore accountability. The public expects such a vital community resource as the Lexington Bluegrass Airport to operate in a responsible manner. But it's clear from our review that management staff lost sight that the airport is a public agency and accountable to the public. I'll be presenting this audit today at 10.30 a.m. to the airport board and at 12.30 to the Urban County Council. I'd like to thank the airport board for its leadership during this audit process, for their cooperation during the audit process, and for the response that they have given us. The board's response is included in the audit. It is a serious and aggressive and thoughtful response that makes clear the board's willingness to move forward with the recommended improvements that are detailed in this audit. We are confident that if these recommendations are implemented, the airport will be headed in the right direction of restoring trust and accountability to this important community resource. In closing, I'd like to thank the auditing team who worked on this assignment. It's been a very difficult assignment as we've done a great deal of work in a very short period of time. All of them are sitting over here in the front three rows, I think. And uh, their professionalism and diligence helped to create a significant report that will result in long-term improvements if it is implemented. I'd also like to personally thank Brian Likens, who headed the project, Brian, over there, who is our director of special examinations and information technology and also Cindy James, the Assistant State Auditor, who helped to coordinate the work. With that, I'll be glad to take any questions. Craig, you've done lots of audits in your years uh, here. Uh, how does this one compare in terms of uh, what appears to be impropriety? I don't think we have ever seen an audit where so many different individuals who are involved in the management of a public agency uh, abused the trust with such arrogance and a lack of ethical standard. Uh, this was a situation where it wasn't just one individual, 
the executive director created a culture of wasteful spending that made it seem acceptable uh, for the other staff to engage in that type of spending. They collaborated on that. There was complicity among the top staff to cover up much in, of the information uh, that the board should have seen and known about. And once you have that kind of situation where you have more than one person who is willing to take advantage of the trust that's been placed, then it's very difficult for the existing policies to be effective because once you have complicity among the parties in, in uh, the top management positions, in this case, for example, the CFO could have and should have brought concerns forward to the board, but he in fact was cooperating with the executive director and was the beneficiary in many cases of this excessive spending and also of the um, personnel benefits that were rewarded to select staff. What, recommend, what recommendations were made to be able to quantify what from now on is an actual marketing expense and what is not a marketing expense? We, um, as, as you'll see in the report, we have over a hundred recommendations, uh, very specific detailed recommendations, each of which uh, follows a set of findings. And a finding in, in the auditing world is simply a conclusion that the auditors reach after reviewing the information. In that particular arena, <clears throat> what we say is there ought to be a detailed marketing strategy, a marketing plan, and then the marketing budget ought to be based on that plan so that the board knows and understands how much money is being spent for marketing and to what end. So that when there are special events or, or there is entertainment planned or there are trips involving marketing, that it ties back to a quantifiable uh, set of goals that the airport understands, the airport board understands, and can link to the budget. Uh, in this case, it appears that there was an uh, extravagant spending and entertainment and gift giving and so forth without a direct link back to what it, what it was we were trying to accomplish from a marketing standpoint. Craig, you've got three years detailed here. Uh, what may have gone on beyond that three year window or outside of that three year window? Have you looked at that at all? Well, we focused on this three-year window because it is the most recent, it is the most, um, uh, it has been the, the questions that have been raised publicly have dealt with this recent period, and because we needed to define a scope quickly that we could get in and, in and out and finish this effectively. I don't know when our office has ever done an audit of this level of detail, this magnitude, in the time frame we did this in. Um, having said that, there is also a finding in the audit that there are records missing from the prior years. And when we did get some questions that we wanted to track down about some of those prior year expenditures, those records were not there. Uh, we made a finding to that effect that not only were there significant files missing dealing with the details of expenditures like this in those prior years, but those missing records were um, never reported to law enforcement authorities officially. Do you come across any evidence that those records would have been destroyed or were purposely removed by anyone? No specific evidence, but it certainly was <coughs> suspicious that knowing the magnitude of the problems that we found in the records that we did find, uh, that we found um, numbers of files that were just completely missing with no duplicates and no records. I heard you mentioned that the recommendation to include oversight of credit card purchases mentioned here about questioning the need for credit cards and you see an organization what about the credit cards? Well, in fact, the airport response, which is included at the back of the report, uh, indicates that they are planning to eliminate credit cards. Um, they, I believe, have evaluated that policy in light of all of this and have determined they will move forward without credit cards uh, being assigned to staff. Craig, an audit you've done like this before in, in spending questions. Have you seen criminal charges been filed before? Or would you foresee that happening here? We expect that law enforcement agencies will follow up on this aggressively. We have been in conversations with them over the last weeks as we have kept them briefed on our work. Uh, it's up to them, really, to make that decision about um, whether to pursue this as a criminal investigation. Uh, but certainly, when we make a referral to law enforcement, it is because our auditors have reached conclusions that lead us to believe there is possible criminal activity. What's considered public funds and what's not considered public funds as far as the airport's concerned? Well, that's a 
that's a very interesting question because there is no question that the airport is a public agency. It meets that test uh, at a number of different levels. Um, the, the land for the airport is provided by the city initially. They are uh, a component unit of urban county government for purposes of auditing and financial monitoring. Uh, they uh, receive state funding this year, for example. They're getting a $9 million appropriation to help with runway expansion. Uh, they receive a grant annually from urban county government for marketing. They receive federal dollars that uh, flow through for uh, facility improvements. So there are tax dollars going there from state, local, and federal sources. In addition to that, there are passenger facility fees on every ticket at the airport that individuals pay when they buy a ticket. There are parking fees that we all pay when we park our cars. There is a rental car fee on every car that is rented. All of that goes into making this uh, total budget for the airport. Now, you could get involved in the nuances of, well, some of that money is earmarked only for capital construction improvements. I would argue that when that much taxpayer money is involved in supporting the overall budget of an organization, then that organization needs to be accountable to the taxpayers. And that money's coming from a number of different directions. Well, what you just said, is it, so this half million dollars, could it have come from all those sources? Because that's what somebody they use. Well, not technically, because some of that money, for exactly, for example, passenger facility fees that are on the tickets have to be used for FAA-approved projects that are more related to um, facility improvements. Um, but I think rather than getting into a line-item debate about their budget, it's just important for people to understand public money supports this, individuals support this through their tax dollars, and we should expect them to be held to the same standards of public accountability that other public officials are. The audit mentions uh, specific instances where the, the board did not pick up on suspicious behavior or potential red flags. Are there hints that you all picked up that individual board members of the board in general was complicit in some of this uh, behavior? There was no indication that board members were involved in either excessive spending or in um, purposely misspending airport funds. I think if there's a way to, to summarize this, they did not employ effective oversight for all of the activities of the airport that would have allowed them to detect these problems earlier. Um, there was a high level of trust placed in the executive director by the board and he clearly abused that trust. Uh, because of that high level of trust, there was not enough questioning uh, on the part of the board about some of these matters. Uh, there were a lack of strong financial controls that, that would have given the board more information and more oversight on some of these issues. And I think critically, there was no formal means for concerns to be brought to the board independently. Uh, as all of you know, this story actually began because uh, someone who had access to this information began to talk to the media. So, obviously when you have a situation like that, the employee uh, who was involved in that, or employees, we don't know, felt uncomfortable taking it through the normal channels of management to the board. Uh, the audit recommends a number of different ways the board needs to establish an independent means for receiving information. They need more reporting from the CFO uh, as one piece. They need to have an independent auditor function so that someone is, um, an internal auditor, I'm sorry, an internal audit function so that someone inside has the ability to take complaints and concerns, oversee uh, some of these issues and take it straight to the board if that's necessary. Um, we also recommend rotating their outside auditor on a regular basis and adding a review to that outside audit that includes a review of internal controls that's not being done now. Um, frankly, that outside auditor should have seen red flags long before this. Uh, so we've given them a number of ways they can, the board can ensure that there are independent channels for information to be brought to them so that they don't get into this position again of having this going on this long without any kind of understanding uh, that it was occurring. Now having said that about the board's oversight, you also had a situation here where the management staff withheld information uh, from the board. They circumvented policies. They lacked ethical standards that governed their uh, decisions. And there was complicity among several of them that, that uh, prevented any one of them from going forward with <coughs> concerns. 
I guess specifically, did you get any uh, answers to why only three of the executive director's statements were signed by the, the, the board chairman as procedures outlined? Well, actually, there was no formal policy that the chair needed to sign those expenditure forms. So his approval was sporadic um, throughout the process. And when he didn't sign them, they were presented by the executive director for approval to the accounting office and to the chief financial officer, and they were processed anyway. So there was no policy that really dictated what needed to be done or should have been done. Is this just the tip of the iceberg from what you've seen here? Do you see it possible that other agencies that run like this, the same thing could be happening? Other public boards, mm -hmm. other public entities? Well, that's a, very, that's a very important question because I don't want this whole controversy to have a chilling effect on people who either serve on public boards today or may be asked to serve on public boards in the future. Um, rather, I hope that people will see this as a case study that can help boards understand what their role should be and understand where their weaknesses might be. Uh, you know, it's the board's role, typically, in a situation like this, to provide the major policy direction and to put in place the guidelines and policies that govern their fiduciary responsibility. Uh, they have to ensure that they have adequate reporting to understand what's going on, and they have to have independent means of picking up concerns or allegations of wrongdoing. Um, this report, because of its um, completeness in dealing with every possible aspect of what went wrong and what can you do to keep it from happening again, ought to be a good textbook for any public board to look at and learn from. It will be on our website. We will encourage every entity that has a board that is a public agency to take seriously what happened here and to review their own policies with an eye toward looking to see if their internal controls are strong enough, looking to see if their reporting is strong enough. So I hope this can be uh, a lesson uh, for everyone to learn from as we go forward because we spent as much time in this audit on the recommendations as we did on analyzing the data. And I hope we don't discourage folks from serving on public boards uh, because this, this is an important community service. When volunteers step forward and get involved in these boards, we need their help and their involvement. And we don't want people to consider that this is too much of a risk after a controversy like this one. We want them to see this as a learning experience, look at what happened, look at the recommendations, and be sure those other boards are really complying with some of the same thoughts that we've uh, given the airport board. Was anything that was forwarded on to law enforcement uh, done so uh, aimed at the board? No. I'm curious, there's a lot of specifics that kind of raised the eyebrows. Was there one thing for you that kind of pushed this over the edge that you said, wow, I, I've never seen that before? <laughs> there were a lot of those. <laughs> um, you know, as we went through this, just the, the sheer arrogance of some of these purchases and expenditures <clears throat> for personal benefit uh, were alarming to me. Um, as we went through here, it was clear that People were benefiting personally. They were um, dramatically increasing the, the, the personal um, benefits they received in any, in any number of ways from their employment at the airport, and in a way that um, was shameful in its scope and in its in the types of expenditures that were made. Um, you know, we we really were appalled that they spent seven thousand dollars for five employees to go on a NASCAR drive um, that they call the team building exercise and the report actually has a, a colored photo in it of that group um, at the NASCAR track and the point of putting that picture in there was what, a, what an incredible display of arrogance to think that you could take that money and the public trust that's been placed in you and go and do something that most of us would never dream of being able to afford to do just as a lark just as a fun outing and call it a team building exercise. Um, then of course, I mean, it goes on and on with the, the $700 bottle of champagne, of course the visits to the gentlemen's clubs. Um, there are time and again instances where we believe, and, and the reason we question these, so many of these, is we believe it had no connection back to marketing, uh, that in fact it was personal entertainment, <coughs> and or in, in many cases just meals in Lexington for employees who just went out and bought their lunch. I mean, 
using those credit cards as if they were personal. Anyone else? Have you seen, has the airport been able to pay off these credit cards? Has the airport been any economic trouble now because of the amount no. on these cards? No, we point out that there were some late fees in some cases um, uh, on some of these, but no, the airport is financially sound. Um, there has actually been surplus money, so I think that was one reason that they continued to just grow this piece of the budget because it gave them you know, maximum flexibility to do this kind of spending. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Uh,